Good morning and welcome to Off the Press, our newspaper review section. We will tell you all about the headlines, what's in the national dailies, and make sense of it, dissect it as much as we can. And with me to do so this morning is um, Ephraim Okenwa, political analyst. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. And welcome. Yeah, thank you. And then Dr. Femi Idohua Degoke, also, who's a social commentator. Uh, it's good to have you this morning. Good morning. All right, so we have a couple of papers this morning to look into, but we shall begin with the Punch newspaper. It will be displayed uh, shortly on your screens there. And it says, the big story is National Assembly LCCI experts knock federal government's 2020 budget. That story is on page 31. Nigeria demands $62 billion from IOCs as unpaid profits on page 34 of the, uh, the Punch newspaper already displayed there on your screen. A minimum wage deadline, labor mobilizes for strike Federal government counters move, and that's on page two. Federal government pays P and ID uh, 250,000 court ordered cost. That's on page 20. And ASU opens talks, uh, peace talks with the breakaway group. That's on page eight. And then Senate uh, proposes five year jail term for school sexual offenders. That's on page 20 of the Punch newspaper. And then funding challenges, Im uh, challenges imminent. I think that's uh, based on the budget, according to professionals and Senate reps begin debate on the document. And we have a picture story of uh, suspected kidnappers and armed robbers during the parade in Kaduna, and that's yesterday. Um, we can see a picture story there. A man arranged for sleeping with four daughters. That's on page four of the Punch newspaper. And the 2.1 billion fraud, uh, 2.1 billion naira fraud court extends Maina and Son's detention. That's on page 10. Lagos gets a 300 uh, megawatts power plant from UA, UAE. That's on page 36. Interesting. Then Unilag raises pro panel on sexual harassment cases. This story gets uh, two pages on four and five of the Punch newspaper. Plateau PDP ex-governor aspirant defrauds BDC operator. Again on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. And lastly, Fiamy wants Senate scrapped. Oron Shae reports implemented. That's on page 34 of the Punch newspaper. And uh, behind the Punch newspaper is a column uh, by um, Otumba Runshewe's obsession with Bob Risky. But the, 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 sorry, that's the that's the topic, but it's by Abimbala Adelakum. So we'll come to that. Gentlemen, what do we begin with this morning? We have so many stories in one paper. Shall I begin with Dr. Idowu? You are smiling all the way, so. Okay, yes. Um, I'll start from the National Assembly as this year, experts. Okay, they knock um, off. Uh, yeah, well, we might, I don't know the details. I'm not an economist, but. But we saw my, the breakdown. Yeah, but with my little knowledge of economics, the budget seems to be a taxation budget. Why did you say so? Taxation budget? Yeah, because how do the government expect to fund that budget? Now they want to, they have increased the VAT to 7.5. 7 7 I was from even thinking 7.2 from 5%. 7 that means, and they've not been able to pay the minimum wage. So they want to rob Peter and pay Paul. Do you agree? Uh, well, uh, it's, it's worrisome uh, because aside from that, uh, the aspect of the VAT, the government is also looking at a reintroduction of toll gates across the nation. Yeah. And when you look at that, it's like, um, you know, someone that's struggling to survive. So you go for the last option. I see it like more or less like our economy is on life support to get to the point of getting to what affects the common man. Because for crying out loud, like the government proposed on maybe a single digit inflation, how do you achieve that when the VAT is rising? Mm -hmm. And of course, you look at a reintroduction of a system that is outdated as long as the system, the, you know, the country is concerned. Even like tolling on bad roads, like areas like in the southeast, imagine asking people to pay, you understand, you know, just to, you know, apply it on the bad road. I mean, it's uncalled for. But then, as it is at the moment, mm -hmm. if you look at it economically speaking, Nigerian government have no option really than to bank on some of those uh, 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 palliatives. But what is my major concern? We, our government, have the political will to ensure strict compliance. You understand? Mm -hmm. As people are now, like people have been advised, 
to uh, apply uh, belt tightening measures. Is the government also on their part ready to, you know, to Tighten do so? Their own belts. And like uh, the PDP also uh, called on the, on the president to review in clear terms how much is actually assigned for the presidency, yeah. for the running of government and governance. Those things are very important because you don't expect people to make adjustments while go running of government. How come it didn't find its way into the budgets? The uh, uh, well, well, of course, uh, we are here to get all of the details. You understand? Uh, what we just see is like the, the bulk of the mm -hmm. sum allotted to different sectors. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, good one there. So. Um, We've paid, finally we've paid the P&IG. Uh, well, that's cost. in court. <laughs> yeah, you know, we've had that conversations back and forth. Yeah. Shall we? Shall we not? And no, we, we paid for the court order. Mm -hmm. So Nigeria is still investigating. And I want them to bring people to book. Yeah, because we've... Few names, names have been mentioned. Yeah, few names have been mentioned. So they will, at the end of the day, will pay back. Whatever they've gotten from that deal. Mm -hmm. I feel they should pay back. And then let's go back to the issue of the National Assembly, okay. to me, play, play into the gallery on the issue of sexual harassment in universities. Oh. oh, yeah. What have they done to corruption? How many jail time do we have for corrupt leaders? Well, maybe they're just focusing, I mean, not throwing your point away, but maybe they're just focusing <laughs> on the item because, you know... Yeah, but the item, does it happen only in universities? Why in isolation? It happens in workplaces? It happens in the public? We just read, uh, there's, a, there's an headline there that says father sleeping with his daughters. Mm -hmm. So what has happened? Why are we uh, sponsoring a new bill? What's happening to our uh, criminal code? You know, this bill was it was passed in the Eighth Assembly. So yeah, that's maybe 2016 or that's 2017. 2016. So yeah. maybe this is uh, not justifying, but yeah. I mean, I'm happy that something is coming to the fore. So yeah. maybe this is like taking off because, you know, Bukola, uh, Bukola Saraki called to say there is need to revisit this. No, it comes back to what I've always said. We because have irresponsible leaders in this country. Who just play to the gallery? Hmm. He was so there for four, something yeah. Happened. He was there for four years. Yeah, they had the bill. Why was the bill not assented to by the uh, by the executive? That's what we should be discussing. Not or why what what made the bill fail? Hmm. Not until when something has happened. Now uh, we had to wait for BBC High to come, and then we start discussing our decadence. But the truth is, we're not addressing the root. Of this problem hmm. like it, it starts from home when the social fabric I keep saying it from homes is broken down there's nothing you can do it affects every aspect of our life and we have governance governance system that is not responsible like we're talking about it I'll relate it back to the budget now we're talking about the economic is need is nil we're not making money we're not doing this fine what happens to cutting your cost mm -hmm. your excesses where we have our Senate leaders, they are asking for, senators are asking for uh, SUVs. Same with, uh, and we're not talking, we're, they're not, and then the labor is coming out now, they're saying they want to go on strike. Mm -hmm. They're not tackling issues. The labor is compromised anyway. I've said that before. We have a backing labor union that cannot buy it. They just make noise so that they get a, a means to discuss with the government. And when they discuss, they exchange envelopes and uh, Ghana must go. And then we're, we're back to square one. Okay, well, I can see you're not in that Yeah, uh, uh, there, there is one truth, and uh, I think it's very interesting, the labor issue. It's also coming in a time that uh, the FG uh, mm. cast a doubt on uh, statistics uh, from international platforms, mm -hmm. like World Bank, yeah. IMF. Mm. We'll come to that. And it's interesting, but then, uh, when I saw that, I, I said, yes, the government could be correct. But then the interesting thing, is that um, by the time we walk towards locally generated data, we may discover that in most cases, it's mm. worse than we actually thought. Mm. <laughs> or that like there are some of those estimates uh, uh, actually reviewed. Yeah. Uh, because one of the things I've always asked myself, like when we put our data, 13.2 million young people out of school, mm -hmm. children and stuff like that, I keep wondering whether maybe children on my streets that probably are not in school are part of that statistics mm. and who counted them. You're concerned them. about how you understand they what arrive I'm saying, at you that. Know, arrive at that and all the rest of it. But sometimes, you know, two things are involved. It's either it's less or more, but as somebody dwelling in the country, mm. I think looking at some of those things, I think uh, they, are, they are fair enough. Because like, for instance, he made a reference to uh, the recent, uh, 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 you know, um, uncovering 
that happen in university sector, you know, with respect to sexual molestation. And then you have a lecturer from UNN saying, well, these things have been happening, you understand? Yeah. It's nothing new. Now, a, a particular school now, the beam of light is on Unilag at the moment, but by the time you go through all the over 116 is, Nigerian mm. universities, mm. you know, you discover that those things are very common there. So, can we say that maybe BC, BBC has really done enough or has revealed everything that we need to know about no, that particular case? Everything. And then coming to the issue of the labor, there is one aspect we have failed to agree as a nation, Which and is? that is the fact that the civil service is overstaffed. Ah. Now, the, the, the simple truth is that we, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, um, we begin to wonder what business, right, does government have in business? And by that, what do we mean? If you as politicians don't get like people who will manage the economy like businesses, like for instance, when you get to a point where you cannot even fund your budget, where you have a situation where the recurrent expenditure is much greater, mm. and in fact, from the budget that was just released, is over twice higher than the, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, the recurrent expenditure mm. is twice higher than the capital expenditure. Mm -hmm. What does that portend for a developing nation like Nigeria, where UNESCO recommends that 15 to 20 percent? You know, mm. should be uh, uh, allotted to education. education. And then beyond that, much more investment needs to be done, mm. you know, in infrastructure. If you, if you ever get industrialized, you understand, mm. and become like, uh, you know, join the first world. But some of those things are not reflected. And what is even pitiable is digging into the, uh, you know, the depth of people's pocket, mm -hmm. you know, of the common men, you know, through the, 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 the VAT, that. and of course the toll gate. So what that means is that the economy is not healthy. But interestingly, America, for instance, for the past at five years, right, 7% represent the number of Americans in civil service. Mm. But in Nigeria, they are close to 20%. So That's sometimes it. you get to civil service office, people are not working because you have enough mm -hmm. persons. Even if you don't come to work in a day, there is no Something specific job description. Some no, people, you could have like five persons in charge of looking for files and stuff like that. So how do we think? So it's very clear for government to come for once. If you keep like every dispensation, we keep promising. Mm -hmm. Or oh, we are going to increase what well, realistically speaking, let's say that let's call a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. Nigeria government, we don't have what it takes because by the time you increase for the minimum person available, 30,000, and then at, at the different cadres, mm -hmm. yes. one of the things we should even ask ourselves, and I think that's why it's coming at this time, look at that budget that's assigned for recurrent expenditures and ask yourself if the new minimum wage is implemented, is oh, it really accommodated yeah. for next year, not to talk of this year, when we are finding to find the space. Feet. So I mean, it's something that calls for critical thinking. And I think the likes of Bismarck and uh, Chukwu Masoludo, mm -hmm. who are well respected, mm -hmm. should be in a position, less transparency. And I tell people, diplomacy cannot handle what transparency we do. Mm. All right. Okay. So that's about it uh, in um, for the punch this paper. We'll actually move very fast in the interest of time, and we'll come to uh, this day. And it says FG demands a $62 billion uh, PSC arrears from oil majors. OPEC grants Nigeria higher production quota. That's on the first page, uh, displayed already there, and then continued on page five. And NMPC says oil pipeline vandalism rises by. 115 percent to 228 in July. That's quite high. And that's on page six of this day uh, newspaper. And then we see as IMF World Bank advocates urgent reforms, Buhari calls for homegrown data, just like you mentioned, and inaugurates Economic Advisory Council. Uh, analysts back IMF. That's on the front page. You can see it there. And you can see the members of the uh, new committee there also. The picture story is there. Uh, this story is continued on page five. And then it says, FG Labour conclude minimum wage talks Tuesday. And that's on page five. Yes, so minimum wage. It's, it's found its way again back here. So we don't know why we're going back and forth. Are we going to end this whole story any day soon? Anyways, we'll see. And then what do you think? I, I mentioned you, I looked at you because you mentioned this already, that we should, say you or Dr. Edo, who yes. mentioned, you mentioned that we should have our own homegrown data. Yeah, so. yeah, very important. And of course, being very detailed about it. 
Because sometimes, and it's really... But we don't have a database. Yeah. I mean, a working we, database. We don't have a database and also people that are detailed. Like, for instance, even to date in our science textbooks, we still have the room temperature is 22 degrees. Oh, wow. Mm. Or a man will do his own yeah. for his own climate region. Ooh, we still tell our people to, you understand? So you stay in your hotel room, you say you need room temperature, and you put 22 degrees and you are feeling very cold. I mean, how does it add up? Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So our ability to look at what the, works, you for, know, us, what works for us, you understand? Go very far and wide to discover those things. Um, and the ones that really, you know, get me wondering, like when you hear statistics, from Nigerian, you know, the locally generated ones, like 400,000 barrels of crude oil are lost daily. And I ask myself, who is counting that, that cannot How stop it? arrive at you that? Know, you know, you, you see that coming from the presidency. And then, that Nigeria have over 1,600 illegal routes through which people come into Nigeria. Oh, you know the places, and you are not blocking it. So it's really very worrisome, because even when we get the data, are we ready to deploy it? And how do we even arrive at the data we have at the particular moment? And then another thing that is very inspiring is the FG demanding you know, uh, for more shares in the petroleum share contract. Mm. And OPEC responded. Life is all about demand and supply. Right. And by extension, in this global competitiveness for passport tenders, I also want Nigeria to join the trend where you have nations like UAE competing, Singapore, you understand? They want to have access, because life is all about access. Mm. People cannot ostracize, ostracize you, say you are bad, you know, you can't be granted visas and stuff like that, and you just leave it like that. Nigeria, the giant of Africa, mm. can only travel to less than 50 countries without visas. Why you have UAE of the other day, they can visit 176 country. Singapore of the other day also, yeah. in the gained independence in 1965, can travel to 190 countries without visas, visas or visas and arrival. So that demand, if we can apply it in petroleum, you know, one thing about such kind of situation where we are, you know, hunger comes with innovation. It does. Right? <laughs> we are really in a very situ in a situation it where everybody is thinking. So I, I was very, you know, surprised when I saw the courage with which we confronted the PNID issue, mm. you know, demand for petroleum share contracts. It really shows that we are coming up. You understand? Life is all about demand and supply. And I want our government to be more strategic men, to be more strategic in engagement. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. And that, sorry, I, I skipped this, I just saw it now. Senators express worry over 10 billion budget estimates uh, viability. That's on the front page there, uh, but it's continued uh, somewhere on page six. Then we'll just quickly go to the back of this day newspaper. It says, when nothing goes for nothing. That's uh, a columnist by Olush, a column by columnist Olushegun Adeniyi. Please grab a copy of this day newspaper and in the interest of time we'll move very quickly and come to the nation newspaper the nation seems to have uh, so many things i can see from uh, looking at it and it says missing cash 135 million naira recovered from general that's on page 44 135 million senators reps begin budget debate and that's on page eight and a unilax panel to probe randy dons um, that's on page 41 police parade 50 kidnap and robbery suspects on page four of the nation newspaper. Nigeria vs Brazil, Eagles in first training. That's on page 47. And Oshun Assembly class 35 for ESCO on page 42. And we see uh, 23 parties to be on ballot in Kogi, says INEC, 23. And then APC lacks presence in Bayosa. Leon, I am a thinker. No SDP candidates in Kogi. I didn't meet below. These and more stories you'll find on page 10 of the Nation newspaper. And again, we have the picture story of the members of the EAC uh, there. Uh, Buhari, World Bank IMF data on Nigeria is unreliable, according to President. It says, President urges Economic Council to generate statistics. Uh, that's, uh, that will be their own task uh, to say. IMF cautions CBN over loan policy and multiple exchange rates. And then we have government and labor for new wage talk on Tuesday. It's displayed there, it's the front page, uh, but it's continued also on page four. And we have a suspect here, I hit Navy commander on the head with iron rod. Uh, that's the suspect, uh, that story is on page four. Uh, court orders detention of Meina and son, Justice Jinadu dies at 93. That's on page 44. The detention of Meina is on page uh, 41 of the Nation newspaper. 
and uh, the back of the nation newspaper it says Aisha Buhari before the curtain falls uh, so reality bites that's the column um, column by Olatunji or Olulade please grab a copy and see what this is about and there's something here also hardball Mr. Lecturer okay so let's come back to the front page uh, the nation has other stories that we didn't see so which one we've talked to yeah, the general. I can see you already, so just no, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just going to... The general. Yes, yeah, 135 million What will happen naira? to him now? We just hear it in the news, and that's it. 135 million naira. The money mm. is recovered. The so money that's is recovered. Not just it. But there has to be a deterrent. There must be. We yeah. must do something to the person. That's, we must. We cannot just talk and talk. Okay, we, do you know how many money they've been recovering since the beginning of this administration? And nobody has been brought to book? We've been going to court. Mena's case is still there. Uh. Mena has been there since the beginning of this administration, even from last administration to this one. But we're not bringing anybody to book. So everybody just feels we can do it and get away with it. We need to become a process system. Okay. We must have process. Uh, let's talk about the data. Even the NNPC. Before, sorry, before we go there, yeah. you know, when we say when people say we don't have process and when people say we don't do enough, yeah. I tend not to completely agree because yeah. I mean having to see it first of all here means that we are paying attention. So it's not like we're completely shunning all of it and saying, well, all of this can go under the cover. Yeah, you but know? we're paying, like you said, we're paying attention. I'm bringing it to but paying you know, attention is not is not done anything. It you're has asking deterred, for more. Yeah, it has not deterred people from doing it. Yeah, yeah. Do you I, understand? It just becomes a news in the paper and nothing happens. And, and let me bring you a perspective. How yeah. did 135 million, million even get to his house at the first place? Exactly. Is this is if is this is money for public fund? These are the things we, we need to How start much is his salary in, in all his How much service? is his salary? Is it the accountant general? It shows the system is porous. Yes. Hmm. You understand? That is the process he's talking about. So let's begin to ask questions because some of this cash may have been disembursed. And then when you fall on the wrong side yeah. of the stakeholders, yes. your name will be published yeah. mm. and stuff like that. So we should be able to ask questions. How did this money get into his hands? And also, one of the stories also I saw making the rounds, you know, the, the money that was recovered in Zamfara. Yeah, you know, in that a, was supposed to, Ghana must go You know, backs. Ghana must go back. You understand? You know, recovering and recovering, we need to know. Where does how it go did, you understand? Yeah, how, how, you know, and stuff like that too. So, Government also should be able to tell us at the end of the day, especially for the one of the Zamfara. Because many Nigerians are already saying, use it and fund budget. Mm. But this is actually meant to be paid uh, for, for salaries staff. for ad hoc staff. So we want to hear that those persons were invited, right? And they, their monies were paid. It should be published on newspapers, announcements, and also that there won't be a situation where someone did not get information ahead of time and another person will answer your name mm. and collect the yeah. package. Mm. Follow through processes. Yeah, so you were going to say before you come to data, or oh, you've that's been taken care of? Thank you. No, I was talking about the data. Mm -hmm. Yes, like you said, we need to generate our own local data and then compare with whatever is coming from the outside because most of the outside, the international data are estimated mm -hmm. based on our population and the uh, what's it called, the, our economic uh, demographics, what are the yes, demographics, poverty, and all that is estimated. But the truth is, we've been running oil and gas sector for so well, for so long. Do we have the good data? Even in the industry where we've made so much wealth from, do Nigeria have data there? Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Do we get it? Do we have it? Is it published? Now you're talking about vandalism in Do you prison. have access to it? Yeah. The ones do, do we have existing. it? Do we have access to it? Do, is it published? Do people, are we really even giving the real data? Some, in some quarters, they will say, Nigeria, uh, generate, we do 2 million barriers a day. So until recently, that we found out we were even doing 1.3 something hmm. a day. So we, even locally, we are not doing well. I, so I see, I don't see how, if we don't become a process system. He made mention of the civil service. I've said it here before. For Nigeria to move forward, we need civil service reform, and we need political reform. Mm. We need vision. We need to plan. We have wasted 20 years. I've said it. 1999 to date is a, it's been wasted. But now we need to begin to think ahead. You're not in affirmation. Yeah. Okay, so. And, and particularly, like, we are just want to weigh in the, the aspect of, um, yeah, you know, the young man that, you know, um, accepted. 
Hmm. That he killed a naval commander. commander. You understand? I mean, it's it's something that is worrisome. It is, uh, when course. crime gets to the point uh, where security personnel become the soft target. targets, and they're able to get away with it only to be discovered after some time. I mean, security is to forestall crime, not basically to wait for it to happen first. Like when we say the primary purpose of governance shall be to secure lives mm, and for welfare. Of the people. It's not what, okay, just show us who killed this person. No, you know, we, we're talking about security. We have the DSS there, right? Mm. We have the police. We should be able to spot these persons ahead of time, even before like some of those crimes happen. Because these things is not just instantaneous. Sometimes it's premeditated, mm. it is planned. Organized. It is planned, you understand? And Coordinated. sometimes also you have compromises. So I mean, it calls for attention. And I think if we can be a little bit more honest on security issue, it's something that is doable. And we can do better. Yeah, sure. Okay, so we'll move to Vanguard newspaper uh, now. And um, it will be displayed on your screen. Uh, it says, 2020 budget projections unrealistic. That's according to the senators. It's a budget of taxation, according to minority leader. A debt service percentage high, GDP ratio too small, capital expenditure paltry, according to majority leader. And reps shut down move to stop debates on estimates. Um, that's on page five. That's a big story there on page five. And inflation will rise with VAT increase, according to IMF, on page 41. And then we have um, something on the Nigerian Economic uh, Summit Group. GDP uh, growth projection of 2.93% is highly optimistic, but achievable. That's according to NACC, IMA, LCCI, Epson, and the others. And then we can do without Senate, according to FIAMI, explains how governors spend the security votes as Italy cuts numbers of senators by 37% to save costs. That story is on page 8, already displayed there on your screen of the Vanguard newspaper. And um, we have again the picture story of the inauguration of the PEAC uh, yesterday. And um, Taraba Varsity expels students for criticizing government, government on Facebook. Oh, that's on page 13. Why so? Please find out. Grab a copy of the Vanguard newspaper. And the sexual harassment allegation, Unilag sets up pro panel as Senate revises sexual harassment bill. And that's on page 10. Uh, the columnists are Amechi and Odinkalo on page 22 of uh, the Vanguard newspaper. Buhari rejects World, uh, Bank, uh, rejects World Bank and IMF statistics on Nigeria. He tasks the Economic Advisory Council to challenge them. That story is on page 41. And then we have something here, sea piracy, maritime leaders set up working group, and that's on page 8. Um, sex for grades, even Nelson comes under fire, and that's on page 41, something on E-Daily. So, well, almost the same thing running oh, yeah. through except for the fact that there's something on maritime security here. Um, yeah. and, uh, yeah. and the aspect of the GDP. I think I want to weigh in on that. There is um, something that happened, I think, uh, last year, and uh, it has bothered me much that in our national conversations, much has not been done in that aspect. Hmm. And that is the very fact that the Ministry of Mine and Steel, you know, they have been still over the time without accountability, the former minister, Elijah Bauer, came out with a shocking revelation hmm. after, you know, taking a, a study of what happens, you know, in the gold mining sector of Nigeria for three years and uncovered that about 355 billion, right, was lost through illegal smuggling of gold hmm. out of the country. And up to date, nobody said it's anything. Everything. I was expecting our own president to ensure he returns that person back in the ministerial list but he was not returned. And he complained that that is not part of our, you know, it doesn't impact on our GDP. Hmm. So imagine if that money can be rechanneled, the great impact is going to have on our GDP, rather than maybe as we are servicing debt, we are also depending more on debt, hmm. and also like getting more from the people, and more can be done actually as a nation. Okay, so I'd like to thank you gentlemen, uh, you. Dr. Idowu Adegoke and Okengwa uh, yeah, Ephraim you. for coming this morning uh, to make sense of the newspapers we have. We encourage you to grab copies of the papers and get uh, the stories in details. And that's where we'll be wrapping it this morning on Off the Press, the program where we tell you all that happens, you know, headlines of the newspaper. We'll do this again, same time, uh, here on Plus TV Africa. I am Amaka Okoye.